In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Unity Mars body tracking, which is now introduced in the latest version of Unity Mars. If you guys remember, I did a video on body tracking with AR Foundation, and those videos did really, really well. And in fact, if you search for Unity body tracking, you're gonna find my videos. But at the time that I made those videos, I made it with AR Foundation. It was really complicated to test because there wasn't really an easy way to test within Unity. So today I'm gonna show you how we can approach this by using Unity Mars, which allows you to do a lot of simulations. And I'm gonna introduce you to what's called a synthetic body. That's going to allow us to test with uh, basically a digital object, see how body tracking works in Unity without having to deploy to the device every single time. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. So if we click on body, you're gonna see that it's going to create a body in the scene view. And this right now, it's what's called a synthetic body. There's really nothing in here that it's going to render if you were to deploy this to the device, but I'm gonna show you how this works. The other thing that also happened is Mars automatically detected that you had a camera. It created a Mars session for you. It created a main camera and then also a Mars user. So there's really nothing that you need to do in here. Under the body, you're gonna have a proxy script and this proxy script is gonna have a couple of new properties. One of them is going to have is body condition. This just tells the system that, yeah, we're gonna be looking for a body. If we look for a body then and we find it, then this condition is going to be true. It's gonna be more of a condition programmatically so that we can enable you know, different actions based on poses that we have made on the body. And we also have this match body pose action, which maps to the also the actual animator, which is the animator that is inside of the body, which is called the default body rate, which I'm gonna show you as well. And you also have an option to edit bindings and also scale match to height and then and so on. So if we were to go in here, you're gonna see that we have this animator. And as you look at it, you're gonna see that we have different you know, components that are representing the, the rig, right? If we go back to body and you click on edit bindings, and yeah, we're gonna say, go ahead and save because it's actually gonna take you to a different scene. You're gonna see that now this has an avatar configuration and it's gonna be basically a rig. And they already provide you with this out of the box, but if you wanted to use your own rig and your own animations, you can do that as well. So in here we can do, you know, if we wanted to, you know, select the eye, we can select the eye and have full freedom to move in some of these bones. If I wanted to go to my left hand, let's say that I wanted to move a specific bone on the hand, I can also, you know, do that. And it's going to tell you here, if I were to move this, that these characters no longer have a, a T-pose. I want to make sure that our characters have a T-pose because that's how we're going to be mapping that to Unity Mars. And then if we go in here into muscles, I'm going to go ahead and revert. You're gonna see that we also have different options in here that are gonna allow us to, if I wanted to open the character, I can open the character. If I wanted to left, right, this gives you different muscle groups that we can that we can change. If you wanted to have the character dance, you can you can do that. There's also a lot of different options in here for different parts of the body. If I wanted to just move the body and you know do things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and reset it all. So we can go back to normal. So the next thing that I wanted to show you is, okay, we have basically a body component that has a proxy. It has different post actions. We have a default body rig, but what if we wanted to look and see how this actual rig animates or we wanted to do a simulation. So if you go in here into window and then Mars, then go into a simulation view. And right now the default simulation is a house. So we wanna go ahead and make sure that we have the body tracking a standing simulation. And this is cool because, you know, we can look at the character as the character animates if I were to hit play, you're gonna see that now, you know, everything is going to animate. This is gonna be the current animation that the character has currently selected. You don't see it here because we actually have to hit play to be able to see it. But on the simulation view, you can do a lot of that. You can look at the simulations, the animations. I can hit refresh if I wanted to rebind these and, and rerun the simulation. I can also tell it to, you know, if you didn't want to see certain things, you only wanted to see maybe the bones, you can do that. On the left side, on the bottom, you're going to see that we have an environment hierarchy and also a content hierarchy. If we look at the environment hierarchy going to simulated bodies, this is what makes this really, really powerful and then going to synthetic body. You're going to see that we have also a playable director. We have basically our, our timeline. And also, if you go ahead and double click that, you're gonna see that now we can pass the simulation. We can also just hit play here 
and basically move our timeline. And, and this is powerful because not only you can, you know, add your own animations in here, but just changing the timeline. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the timeline down here. And you, you know, you can see that we have a wave animation, we have different type of animations. So if you wanted to use your own animation, let's say you wanted to capture the a pose where the character is doing a push up or the character is jumping, then you can add your own animations in here. The reason why this is powerful is because not only I can do that, but I can also go back in here and you can see that we have this safe pose, right? So let's say that we wanted to, so right now the character is currently waving. Let's say that we wanted to capture that pose and anytime I do an actual wave, just like the character is doing in real, li in real life for me, then I would want to trigger some kind of action. Maybe we wanted to display a message. Maybe we wanted to, you know, tell the character that it needs to improve the posture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, save pose and I'm gonna create a new folder here just to keep things clean because I'm gonna be sharing this and I'm gonna say this is gonna be poses and I'm gonna say that this is going to be my wave pose so I just say wave pose and I'll just go ahead and hit save once you do that this is gonna create a serializable basically a scriptable object and it's gonna have all the different options in here that you can also change so, so not only I can change I can save the pose but I can also make any changes to the different poses that I'm looking for. So if I wanted the character to, maybe the hand, I don't know, maybe the span is to be a little bit tilted that way, or maybe this one is to be that way. So you can change some of these depending on what you want to capture when you're doing body tracking. So, so that's cool and all, so how do we actually use it? So that's what I'm gonna show you next. So if we go back into our sample scene here, and I'm gonna go back into the full body, and let's click on body. If we go into the proxy object, you're gonna see that not only we can, we have these components in here, but you can also add a new component. So I'm gonna add a new condition, and actually it's gonna be a new action. And in here, we're gonna do a body, what's called a body expression. And it's gonna tell you that it added a body expression action. And the cool thing with this is we can either click in here to create a new pose, or we can just add a new pose if we wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand trigger events, I'm gonna add a new one here, and the element, it's going to, basically it's going to ask us for a body pose, and we did have one already that we created, so we call it the wave pose. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trigger just a message in the console that is going to, you know, it's gonna capture whenever the character is currently waving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new folder here, let's just go ahead and keep things clean. And this one, we're gonna call it the pose, let's call it the pose tester. And we can do different things in this script. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just add a new method here. We'll just say pose tester, and this is gonna be our action. So body, body action. And we'll just pass in a string that it's going to be representing the action type. So, and then we'll do just a debug that log, and the action type is what we're going to be and basically displaying. So if we go back into Unity, we can now hook up to that event. And the way that we do that is we have this trigger event that we can associate with the script. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and click on the plus symbol here to add a new one. And then we can go ahead and add our script to here so that we can actually associate it. And then if we go into the function, you're gonna see that we have the actual event that we just created. It's called body action. It's gonna be waving event is executed and what's going to happen is when the when we actually run this and the character starts waving we should expect to see that message what i'm going to do to test it is i'm going to click play and once we hit play we should expect the action to get executed and should expect it in the actual console so so we can see that now the character is waving or actual debug lines are incrementing and that's incrementing because of the actual trigger action that we that we gave it so if we wait for the animation to basically cycle again, so right now we're not currently tracking the wave, so it just did a different kind of pose. But if we go in wait here, you're gonna see that now, as soon as the character starts waving, we should expect that message to, to be displayed again. I can clear the lock so that it can make more sense. So let's just wait for that to happen. And it's waving again, so you can see that now we're currently tracking. So let's try and adding a different action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a different pose. So if you remember, we need to go into our actual simulation view here and then go click on the environment hierarchy, go into simulated bodies, synthetic body. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and open my timeline. So I'm gonna do it 
right when, so I think I'm gonna do it right, perhaps in here, I think that will be cool. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit save here, save post. And this is gonna be poses, we can say this is gonna be the wave pose too. And then what I'll do is again, we'll go back into our body, go into the proxy, and then we're gonna add a different type of trigger event. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do two. And this is gonna be, again, instead of using the wave pose one, we're gonna be using number two. And this is gonna be waving, we can say cooler event executed. And we should expect both of them to get executed now, right? Because we're not only capturing this one, which was the, the previous one, but we're also capturing when, whenever the character does this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see the results. So you can see that the character wave and we have the, the log entries for that. So what I expect to see is we should see a waving to event executed as soon as the character does the other one. And you can see that that happened. Actually, it's waving cooler event is executed. So we're currently capture, capturing two different two different poses, which is really powerful when it comes to body tracking. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna also show you how you can add your own 3D assets. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the default body rig and we're gonna be adding our own. So if you go to started assets, which I downloaded from Unity and I'm gonna go into models and I'm gonna go ahead and add the arbiter that comes in here and then click on T-Pose and it's going to basically put a T-Pose on, on your character. So what we need to do here as well is I need to go into, into geometry and I need to add the actual material. So I'm gonna need to do, I believe this one is going to be body, and then I'm gonna need to do arms, and lastly, I'm going to do legs for the material. So everything should be, you know, it should look correct. So the other thing that you need to do as well is if you look in here on the body component, we also need an animator. Well, the animator is on the armature, so make sure that you link that. So now what I can do here is we can go ahead and hit play. You're gonna see that now we have the character, which is our own character waving, and we can test it. So this is cool because we don't need to deploy it. We can just test it in here and make sure that everything works. We can also, just like we did with the, the other, basically with the other characters, we can actually hit play and see if it captures or poses because everything should work the same way. It's just a different 3D model. And if we go here to the console, you can see that we're currently tracking those events. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down a little bit so you can see it. And then as soon as this cycles through the animations, we should see the other event in here, which is gonna be the waving cooler. You can see that everything, everything works, right? And we can also look at it in here. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna show you is how we can use some of the landmarks that are available in this body to be able to place different objects. So in my case, I'm just going to be using the default, a default cube to be able to be placed in the hands. So as the hands are gonna move, the cubes are going to be follow the hands but you can do cooler things, right? If you wanted to put a ring, if you wanted to put basically a bracelet, maybe a different hat or something like that, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this body, create a new body so that we have everything you know, set up correctly. If you look in here, we, we do have the body and it has everything in here, all different joints that we can select. We have the spine. And if I were to expand the spine, you're gonna see that at some point in here, we're going to get to our hands so we have our shoulder here. If I wanted to go into my forearm, we can get to that. So what I'll do here on the left hand, we can basically just place a cube right here. So what I'll do is we'll just go ahead and create a new cube. Let me go ahead and right click here. 3D object cube. It's going to be a giant cube. Right? So what I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and then and just do zero, zero, zero. And then I'll make these uh, prefabs so you guys have it in there. Let me go ahead and create a new folder. It's going to be prefabs folder and then we can just say it's gonna be you know simple cube okay so we can just remove that and then what i'll do here is on our hand we're going to be adding the cube to our hand and you're gonna see that it's going to you know, it's gonna be positioned right there and then what i'll do is i'll do the same thing with the right shoulder we'll just go ahead and expand expand and then we can just put it right here on the right and of course you can do if you wanted to add one to the hip we just add one to the hip character is going to start waving the cubes are going to stay with the bones that we just added you can see the bones on the on the feet the cubes on the feet are actually staying in place so so this is powerful again if you wanted to basically add different you know different elements and 3d elements to a to a body when you're when you're doing your own implementation so so everything that i wanted to show you guys today if you guys have any other questions please let me know. And I think I'm gonna make another video where we make an app and use that app to do, you know, different tracking 
in by using AR kits if we wanted to capture push-ups, if we wanted to capture the body form of an ex exercise, we can do that easily by using this technology. So that's everything that I have for you today. Thank you very much, guys.